Uh, welcome to part two of my shop tour. In this part we will take a closer look on the machinery that I use and how I have modified them to suit my needs and my shop. And uh, we start with the most recent purchase and the biggest machine that I have and that is this beauty here. It's a Hammer A331 jointer planer with a spiral cutter head. I purchased this a few months ago and so far I'm very satisfied with it. I used to have the same joint or planer before, a Hammer A331 with a traditional cutter head, but when upgrading to new dust extractor it made a lot of noise. So to keep the noise down as much as possible I upgraded to this uh, spiral cutter head version instead. I only done one modification to this machine and that is to install my turbo handle. Uh, so I will show you a conversion to planer mode so you see how that works. This is where you usually spend a few minutes cranking the handle up, but instead I built my own handle. There is a movie about that in Swedish. I hope you understand, even if you don't understand the language, it's a quite simple construction. So here I use the screwdriver to raise the planer bed. <laughs> That saves me a few minutes every day I'm in the shop. My next big machine is my table saw. It's a Watkin Burst Green AGS-10 from 1958. A super solid cast iron table saw. I have fitted it with an outfeed table that hangs directly on the saw. So rather than standing on the floor, the, the outfeed table sits with brackets on the saw itself. And that makes it much easier to align the the work surface on the outfit table with the work surface on the saw itself. Under this outfit table I fitted my cyclone and my vacuum cleaner. And under the left side extension table on the saw I placed my blade storage, easily accessible like so. I spent about half a year on this saw trying to get it in good shape and uh, the most of the time I spent converting it to a modern style riving knife. I have made a complete write up of this in English including pictures and 3D files for those of you who are interested. I will just quickly show you how the mechanism looks. When I purchased this saw it had a fixed riving knife that didn't follow the blade movement. So I manufactured all these aluminum parts down here. And now it has a modern style driving knife that follows the blade movement. The other major modification I did on this saw was to build this, this dust hood that sits on the back side. Without that this side of the saw is fully open. And I would say with the dust hood and a fully closed cabinet as it is now the extraction works very well. The next major machine in my shop is my bandsaw. This one is a Swedish brand, Leni. It's from the 1970s. It has 350 millimeter wheels. Despite its small size, this is a very rigid bandsaw. The main frame, this part here, is made out of one piece cast iron and that makes it very stiff. Uh, so I can tension quite wide blades. I usually run a 15 millimeter rip blade on this bandsaw. Now we're seeing the bandsaw from the underside of the, of the table. This saw had no dust extraction when I purchased it, so I built this little dust box that sits screwed up in the main table with these two screws here. The blade runs in this slot here, and the vacuum hose is fitted in this hole here from the side. And this is an extremely good extraction. I would say it takes almost all dust. There is a separate video about the router table, so I will not go into that into details. But I use this whole table as a router table. I just attach the fence to uh, threaded inserts in the top, or I attach it with uh, clamps through the holes here. My assembly table also works as a place for cutting up sheet goods. So I made these brackets here that fit the, the Festool hinges for the, for the rails, like so. Having these hinges in a fixed position means that the rails end up in the same position every time. So I only have one saw groove in my worktop and that is at the position where I have a stabilizing rib underneath to not weaken the top. 
The next machine on the list is my drill press. This is a table mounted model from Alberga, that's a Swedish brand. The machine is from the 80s and it's a very heavy duty construction. It weighs 110 kilograms. It's a long stroke model, so I have about 120 millimeter stroke here, which could be useful sometimes. It's a geared model, so to change the speed, I change the gear wheels up here to other sizes. And then in each gear wheel combination, I have a high and a low setting on the RPM through this handle here. So I have uh, RPMs between 200 and 3500. The table and the fence and this thing here will get its own video one day, so I don't go too much into details on those. I just quickly wanted to show you the, the dust extraction concept, because I just recently invented it, so it sits on this rod here. And then the dust hose goes here. I will give you a close-up of that as well, so you see how it looks. Next machine on the list is the Metal Lay. Uh, this is an Emco Compact 5 from the 80s. It was a very popular model and there are still a lot of spare parts available for it. This one has an automatic feed. And uh, that is quite useful. I, I do a lot of, of uh, wooden parts even if it's a Metal Lay, like this round things. Uh, done some lamp foot just recently so I do a lot of draw pulls and draw knobs and so on so even if it's primarily a wood shop I have great use for having a metal light. This is the final machine to present. It's a belt grinder, uh, linisher, whatever you call it. The model is called Sorby Pro Edge and it's very popular among wood turners. Uh, I used to own a Tormek but I found that way too slow for my needs which is to make the primary bevel on chisel and plain irons. Here I can choose a grid size between 60 and 3000. I have a lot of belts here and it's extremely quick method to, to grind new bevels compared to the Tormek. Uh, the machine originally comes with this support plate here and this side fence here and here the idea is that you slide your chisel or plain iron back and forth like this. I found that way a bit too unstable especially for wider plain irons. So I added this metal bracket here that holds this bar here and that makes it a copy of the Tormek style. So I have jigs that slide on the bar back and forth like this exactly as you do in a Tormek. I own this machine uh, more than a year now and I'm still extremely satisfied with it. That's all the stationary machines I had to present. Of course I have some handheld routers and sanders and so on but I don't think they are worth spending time on. Instead I want to show my place for working with hand tools. Uh, this is a classic Swedish workbench from Hwelby. I bought it second hand a few years ago and I modified it quite a lot. I replaced the front vise with a quick release version and uh, the tail vise was really crappy so I used that vise screw and made it into a wagon vise instead and that works very well. The bench is not very heavy but it's screwed to the wall so it doesn't move when I play on it. This side here I have my shooting board almost permanently mounted, it always sits there. I have a lot of hand tools, uh, I have some planes. Uh, this one I want to show you, I got this from Fine Woodworking for best tip of the month a few months back so I'm, uh, I'm quite proud of that one. So that was my uh, my small shop tour. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Thank you very much.